name is Rashida and I did my research project on the newly discovered species Edwardsiella andrilli. This is Antarctica. The Antarctic is a place on Earth reserved for extremophiles. With temperatures well below freezing for the majority of the year, barely any rainfall and extreme winds, it's a wonder to realize that there are indeed organisms that live in this inhospitable environment. The organisms and environments associated with glacial ice are poorly documented due to the inaccessibility of the habitat to scientists, but discoveries have nonetheless been made. This is Sini, the submersible capable of under-ice navigation and imaging. Under the Coleman High Project and as part of the Multinational Antarctic Geologic Drilling Program, also known as ANDRIL, Sini was deployed at the two locations marked A and B on the map through a 30 centimeter hole drilled by a hot water drill into the ice. As Sini turned its upward facing cameras to the undersurface of the ice, it captured a large field of small animals burrowed into the ice shelf with their tentacles hanging into the water below. Another field of the creatures was found at the other location. The specimens were extracted from the ice using an improvised suction sampler mounted onto the outside of the Sini remotely operated vehicle. The sampler consisted of a plastic tube connected to a one-way filter to a water filter and chamber where samples were stored until retrieval at the surface. The opening of the plastic tube was positioned in the field of view of the forward-facing camera on Sini. The remotely operated vehicle was then flown under the ice to the specimens while hot water was flooded under the surface to stun the organisms. The samples were then sucked into the holding chamber and brought back to the surface where they were placed temporarily in ethanol for the return trip to McMurdo Station, where they were then later transferred to formalin for long-term preservation and study. More than 20 samples were collected using the improvised suction sampler during a series of dives. These animals are a newly discovered species of anemone, hereafter described as Edwardsiella andrilli. All true sea anemones belong to the order Actinearia. Edwardsiella is a genus of Edwardsidae, a family of extremophile burrowing anemones that live in a variety of habitats ranging from trenches to coastal estuaries in hypersaline and hyposaline waters. All previously described species of Edwardsiella, such as Edwardsiella carnea pictured here, are from coastal waters. Edwardsiella andrilli is the first reported species of anemone to make its home in ice. Other species of anemone found in the Antarctic are reported as living below the anchor ice in soft or hard substrate. Anemones normally burrow into the substrate by continual expansion and deflation of the pedal disc or by digging with their tentacles. The means by which Edwardsiella andrilli burrows into the ice are unclear. Its ability to even survive in the ice is unclear. This is a photograph of a formalin fixed specimen of Edwardsiella andrilli. The species is characterized by its tapering elongate column of an opaque white color that is lacking the periderm that many other species of their genus have. They have between 20 and 24 tentacles of similar color to the column. The length of the column of whole contracted specimens was between 16 and 20 millimeters and the diameter up to 6 millimeters. So now I'm going to elaborate on the external and internal anatomy of Edwardsiella andrilli. I've provided some diagrams so you can follow along. The capitulum is short and faintly ridged. The scapus is long and smooth, tapering down to the aboral end, the end farthest from the mouth, which is slightly pointed and in some contracted specimens contains a pore, signifying that the tip of the aboral end gets contracted into the column. Column regenation is not pronounced. The capitulum is not visible in most of the specimens as it is retracted into the column, hiding the capitulum and the base of the tentacles. The tentacles are found in two cycles that are differentiated by size with eight longer, thicker tentacles in the inner cycle and the rest in the outer cycle. Eight perfect mesenteries of equal size and development span the length of the column. Two pairs of macronemes are directive mesenteries, one pair of which attaches to the siphonoglyph, which draws water into the anemone. The ectoderm of the actinopharynx is lined with glandular cells and nematocysts, or stinging cells. Most species of Edwardsiella are found in the northern hemisphere. Only Edwardsiella ignota, as pictured here, has been reported from the southern hemisphere, from Chile. They are very similar and differ pretty much only in the number and types of stinging cells, or nidae. Other actinarians that make their home of the Antarctic are Edwardsia meridionalis and Scolanthus intermedius, as pictured below. These differ from Edwardsiella andrilli in having nematodomes, which are small groups of stinging cells in the ectoderm of the column. 
In doing this research project, I've found that more research can be done on the species to determine three things. Reproductive behaviors and dispersal methods, which give clues as to how large fields of the species arise and how each individual ends up where it does. What adaptations it might have to surviving in such an unusual habitat and the mechanism by which the animal burrows into the glacial ice. Well, that was my presentation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.